Hello, folks, and welcome to the Friend or Foe Series Season 4, day number two of our Luna League. Uh, this is getting a uh, cut, or day number, not day number two, day number two of week, what is it, like six now? Week six is confirmed, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, it's, it's, it's been a long week. We're now like a little over halfway through. We've got teams playing against each other for a second time, getting ready for that playoff setup. We've got Coin Flip Gaming going up against Terracotta today. So this is going to be an interesting one right here. Coin Flip Gaming, they, they've been kind of like one of those teams that is very coin flippy. And now that they've had a total roster change, going to be kind of exciting to see what they come out with. Yeah, definitely. They had uh, some team members step from the scene yesterday. Uh, they seem to perform really well, so uh, overall it was kind of a, a nice refresher, I would say, overall. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, TG, uh, uh, this is a little bit ago, but they've had a couple of roster changes of their own. And I would also say those changes were for the best. So these are two teams that have had a very uh, big jump in, in skill, I would say, over the progression of the season. Absolutely, and Terracotta, absolutely. Like they're one of those teams that have kind of like showcased themselves, where they started off a little bit as a meme, uh, as the fourteen ninety nine gaming team, and they have totally lived up to that, and they have kind of proven, hey, you know what? Maybe that's actually a worthwhile uh, subscription right there. Uh, with this first set of draft that we, or with the draft that we have coming out right now, uh, we got the Leona Zhao and Shen pick up on the side of Coin Flip, so it's a very hard engaged comp. So they're going to be looking for a, a lot of fights, a lot of really in your face sort of things going on. So we're gonna be looking for some AP damage on their side. Uh, in the meantime, Terracotta has gone a little bit more well-rounded, a really good pickup of this Trundle with that subjugate and the pillar and the slow zone. It's gonna basically shut down a lot of that hard engage as soon as it gets in there. Yeah, that's, that's very true. I, I see a lot of teams in FWF that like to play the Trundle. Uh, I would like to say it's probably Nier's fault in Season 3. I don't know. It, it was it wasn't a thing, and then boom, everyone's playing it now. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, it's a phenomenal champion. It's going to do the task it needs to do. Uh, but also, a Riven pick coming through for the side of TG. Something we weren't exactly, I would have guessed, but I do know Shield of Valor loves to play Riven. It's one of his favorite champions. And as soon as I take the Shen away from him, I guess it's a good move. Put him on something comfortable. Let's kind of see how he does but yeah, you put him on something that he's really comfortable with, and you're just going to have a major uh, major tough time in that top lane. So uh, I'm expecting you belong in a museum to kind of be playing it safe, and because of the fact that Shielded Valor is just going to be pressuring so darn much. Uh, if we look down at these secondary set of bands, we see that the Bane and Twitch have both been taken away from Sadus. Those are two champions that he's done pretty well on, so we'll probably be seeing something. I'm expecting like a Jinx or something of that nature coming out uh, from him. In the meantime, though, Iron Tower and Antunes, probably very little that they're actually worried about. The Nautilus and Thresh are both taken, and Blitzcrank are taken off the board, though. So Antunes is most likely going to be going something kind of spicy, I just got a feeling for. I don't know. Uh, I mean, just the respect in the bottom lane between both of these two teams is huge, as you can tell. That is five support bands and four AD carry bands. So yep. both sides are going to pinch so hard. CFT was able to pick up Leona very early. So seeing whatever TG is going to pick up is kind of strange. I'm kind of confused. Maybe it might be support Amumu. Maybe some cheese with his Vagar. He could go mid or bot. I don't know what's going on, but I feel like saving support for last pick is a little troll. But I don't know. Could be wrong. Last two games, uh, Antunes has picked up the Amumu support, so that is actually really, really likely uh, to see that there. We'll most likely be seeing Trundle going into the jungle. Uh, so this Vagar being a really good mid pickup, so we're going to be seeing what Coin Flip's planning on doing for that counter. Uh, and then it's just a matter of what kind of ADC we're going to be seeing Iron Tower pick up. He's got a very, like, his his champion pool is very, very wide. And he's got a lot of different options. The Caitlyn is still on the table. We've still got the Ezreal available. Um, so basically, all of that is going to be available. And now we've got the Tristana being picked up by CFG. I, I personally, I would want to see a Caitlyn or an Ash, just because both of those would provide some extra CC or uh, range so that you're actually able to kind of kite the Tristana out if you need to uh, and not have to worry about that extra damage uh, from the bomb being dropped on your head. And then with the Corky pickup, uh, I'm into this Vagar. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about that. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of interesting, but I mean, it, it's going to be a rough lane if Vagar has to go uh, or if Corky has to fight the Vagar, that's going to be rough. But I do like it on a team comp overall. Uh, Corky offers a lot of mobility and uh, the ability to follow up with Shen. So they can be in that bot lane real quick if they need to. So if I was on the side of TG, I'd spend some time making sure that you belong in a museum, can't make these kind of plays. And mm -hmm. that is a rise locked in. So I think we are going to see a Vagar bot. 
We are going to be seeing a Vagar bot. That's going to be really kind of... Ooh, this is... It's probably going to be that Vagar Amumu combo. I am... Oh, this is going to be interesting. Heavy on the end, probably, yeah. <laughs> Heavy on the end. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of got my money on Terracotta. I like it. I, I like the spice. So you, uh, let's go ahead and we're going to hop onto the Rift here and see how this actually ends up playing out. I do, one thing I do like about the Riven and the Shen is you have a couple of different pieces in your toolkit that you can use to disrupt the Shen trying to help out uh, his other laners. So as soon as he starts to ult away you, as Shen, you've got to make sure you've got that distance to where you are able to drop down with the teleport. Otherwise, you can either get knocked up by the triple Q or you'll get stunned. Yeah, those are definitely all very good options for Shield of Valor to facilitate the ability that Shen has an impact on the map. So overall, it's very good. Um, I, I do like Tien on Rise. Uh, I believe we've seen it before. It was it was a very good performance overall. I, I just, I'm very not sold on how this bot lane is going to go. I mean, it, it sounds like a lane cheese, and it sounds kind of disgusting, and I want to throw up a little bit, but I can't do it since I'm stuck here on the table with you. Uh, but mm. <laughs> I don't think it, it's going to be good for them late game. I don't think they can take uh towers or hold objectives super strong because of that those picks tower taking is going to be really tough for the side of terracotta you're not wrong uh i do think that once vagar starts hitting those late game ap power spikes he's going to start dealing a lot more damage to those towers than uh you would expect with those auto attacks um however it, it's one of those situations where in this game uh it, it's just, it's going to be really really weird i think in that bot lane because you're gonna have leona trying to dive in then they're gonna get vagar caged or a mumu bandaged and so like that's gonna be a shutdown of that engage right there and i just i don't expect vagar doing a lot in this early game oh they're gonna find some early cheese us oh right win. there we got a nice jump on this iron tower getting caught out he's gonna have to flash over the wall he is ignited that's gonna be another flash coming out from tristana as sadas gets himself an extra kill or riri just kind of hanging out by grom trying to finish off his camp uh, we do see that Antunes is able to escape, though, so they aren't going to pick up a second kill, but that is going to be the bot lane for Terracotta, missing out on a probably about, like, three waves. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we're going to be able to suck up a little bit of that experience, but for Iron Tower, getting behind in this type of lane is definitely not good. Uh, just being immobile, the cage will help, but you got to get the levels up to be able to have that be oh. a factor. I missed the fact that there was a TP, but in the meantime, we got a fight up here in the top lane. Shield of Valor getting jumped on. He is going to get hit really hard by this Xin Zhao. That is probably going to be a barely escaping Riven, just getting under tower uh, in order to, to keep from getting jumped on one more time. Uh, that, oof, that was really, really close. That is true. Uh, I, I do believe Riven still has Flash, though. So, I mean, that was really good on Shield of Valor to be able to know that the limits of the gank that was happening and not have to blow a summoner and keep that in his pocket for later. I'm sure it'll come in handy. Absolutely. He's going to be fighting into the, fighting into the Shen. Most likely Xin Zhao is going to be... Uh, he's aware that bot side is really strong for the side of coin flip. So he's probably just going to ignore it almost entirely until they need to take these drakes. Uh, just keep on ganking that top lane. Keep on frustrating that ribbon because that's going to keep pushing into the Shen. Probably going to be a lot of opportunities up there and there's some good objective around Shelly. So... Yeah, definitely uh, currently showing a strong side top. Uh, just kind of small CS. It's not existing. Everyone's kind of keeping the same pace mm. overall, despite that early kill going over to the side um, of CFG. So overall, yeah. just kind of a nice pace. I think we're going to be looking for some more action probably close to around eight minutes when Corky gets packaged, um, unless there's something crazy that happens around a dragon. But I, I don't see either of these two jungles opting into that yet. Yeah, it's like we said, this Vagar is going to be uh, a little weak early on. He did, so because he burned that TP so early, he actually doesn't end up losing out on much at all. It's mostly just the extra gold in the pocket of Sadus that's going to be the problem as of right now. So they're able to kind of uh, even out this lane a little bit. And as you can see, the Vagar is doing pretty good on CS, able to get those stacks. Um, and then with that, we're going to probably be looking around this mid lane, I think, where Ryze versus this Corky is going to be an interesting matchup. And... and I think that's going to be the deciding factor. Like, the jungler is going to keep on pressuring both sides of this, but I think whichever one is able to escape first, Ryze or Corky, and start affecting the rest of the map is where it's all going to play out. That's a fair point. Uh, overall, just with the, the way Ryze works, he's already got his tier. Once he gets his last chapter, Corky is going to pay very heavily if he tries to roam. 
uh, at all. He can take a lot of poke in the Ooh, wave. Nice engage here or Riri coming in. We got the troll trying to make a bad day for this ninja. He is able to get a nice chomp on there, but that is not going to be a kill. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but up here in the top lane, the, the junglers are doing their best, but uh, nothing, nothing, nothing seems to work for him so far. Both the top players have managed to walk out of their ganks respectively and keep their flashes. So nothing more than a bit of a mild inconvenience for both sides. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, definitely more mild inconvenience up here. I think that's just kind of how the nature of top lane is, though. It's like it's either a wet noodle fight or it's the jungler just sits up there all the time and is like, guys, please, the jungler's here again. Do something. <laughs> I, I, I can understand that. I, I I don't understand top lane. It's the Wild West. Anything is possible up there in my head. Like, <laughs> it is. It is very much an island. Is a good way to describe it. Because sometimes, because sometimes you have a very nice uh, island uh, island mate where basically, ooh, nice jump right there. Uh, to, we do have Sadist getting caught though. He's inside of the cage. That is going to be one dead Sadist right there. And we got poor Dust trying to run away. They're going to take a decent amount of damage, and I think they are going to be able to get out of here because the Intunes is not ready for that tower dive. That was really well countered by Terracotta. Yeah, uh, it's, it's hard to get much follow-up. Uh, that was uh, a sus play is what I would say. I think we just saw Sadist vent a little bit. Uh, <laughs> just kind of blindly jumping into the bush, knowing that the amount of CC you both contain is... is Ooh, Antunes getting Zenith Blade and just kind of continuing to fight this right here. We do have Iron Tower coming up to say hello. Ignite's going to come out, and that is going to be a nice engage, nice trap on the Leona. Leona's going to get uh, lightning bolted from the Electrocute, and that's going to be Sadis jumping on top of Iron Tower, basically making him suffer for overstaying his welcome in this bot lane. But in the meantime, Oriru is just like, you know what? I'm going to take this Drake because it's right here. So I think we're good. Sadis going for the tower dive. This is really risky. He already takes two tower shots. Corky is now underneath. What? He misses the missile, but he's going to hit the second one, and he's going to go down to tower, and that's going to be an execute because, unfortunately, no one was able to hit him. Oh, boy. Okay, there were there some good things and there were some bad things, and I will say the hardest part about watching that play was not yelling support or combat at the start. Let me just start with that. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, I like the way that Sadus was uh, positioning. He was able to, once the Vagar cage went down, just pop over, get the side scene once. TN, that was a good ult. Making sure to give him the, the schmooze, as they would say. And then after that, when he jumps over with a move positioning to take the blast plant, put it in a position that, that Sadus was already going to land. So also kind of weird that those are the direction they went and the tower dive was interesting i will i will give it that there uh the, the best part is corky got executed so at least they're getting some gold in their pocket without getting punished too much. i think that was probably about as well as it could have gone um i think maybe corky could have like entered a little bit earlier about uh maybe gotten the kill a little bit sooner uh, while the second tower shot was coming out from on to Sadis. But other than that, yeah, that was probably about as good as we're going to see uh, coming out from right here. I do like this roam by Antunes. He does walk right onto a ward uh, just as it's getting placed. So unfortunately, isn't able to execute the gank, though. Correct, yeah. So just kind of take in the state of the game overall. Uh, first dragon going onto the side of TG is really good for them, despite being down with kills. The gold's still about even. Um, just slight CS gaps here and there. Nothing that can't be closed out too much. Uh, Vagar, however, getting the better side of the Tristana is a little bit surprising in my opinion. Should be able to just control the wave a little bit. I know it naturally pushes, but... That bandage to us was a little sus. Just want to say. <laughs> Look, uh... I don't think we can call it every sus thing here, but it's fine. <laughs> yep, uh, and unfortunately, Antunes once again getting caught out, get hit, running right into a uh, shield break from Leona, just getting hit in that face right there, and then Zenith Blade to just be stuck around uh, and just gets completely bursted down by Zin. Yeah, uh, definitely uh, just sad mummy noises intensify is what I would caption that play with. Uh, <laughs> but overall, I, I mean, it's not it's not too far gone. Uh, everything is still in an okay spot. I would just kind of, if I were on the side of TV, just uh, kind of focus on where the drones aren't bad, but without the, the proper follow-ups, and people do not thought that it's probably cool. to be right. free kills kind of. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's uh, kind of a situation where Terracotta right now, uh, they're not too far behind. They're kind of in their win condition, although Ruben really wants to be getting ahead earlier than this. They kind of want to be already winning lane against Shen. That's kind of just a uh, Shen can win that lane by neutralizing it. 
uh, just keeping the ribbon stuck in the top lane. But once Shen decides to disappear, that's going to be an opportunity for them to start pushing that wave in, get some plates, get some tower gold. Uh, and that's going to be where Riven gets really scary. That is true, just in general on the Riven pick. Shielded Valor has been playing a lot more tanks. He he plays a lot of Shen personally. So um, despite, you know, just Riven being an interesting pick, it, it seems to be like a total playstyle switch for him. Um, of course, it's still too early to tell exactly if this is going to pay off or not, but I think it is exciting if TG can show that kind of versatility. Mm -hmm. No, it's going to be really exciting to see exactly how this ends up going. Um, we do see right now just coin flip making a good decision. Go ahead and go for this uh, Rift Scuttle, uh, Rift Herald right here. Uh, with that, that's going to give them a lot of pressure in order to kind of be able to start pushing out these uh, waves once they destroy some of these towers. I really think that if they can crack this mid lane, it's going to give them a major advantage getting that wedge going. Uh, and in the meantime, I think that this bot lane, they know that there's a timer on it. Decent quirky package right there, kind of separating the lane up. And that's going to be a flash Zenith blade thrown out. Then there's going to be a flash coming up from TN to avoid getting caught. Uh, that was a... I think that was a decent package use right there just because it kind of cuts off a lot of Ryze's escape right there. Yeah, overall, if, if you have the package and that's what you want to do with it, I I think it's the best application. Uh, I personally, if if, uh, if I was the quirky, I kind of only look to pick up packages to play around something. So mm -hmm. I would just even let, let it sit in base and then uh, pick it up when we want to take Dragon or if we want to do a hard push or if we want to get Rift Herald. That, mm -hmm. but ideally, well, they did have it for Rift Herald. So if they needed to use it, then it would have been a good like that would have been a good spot there. So they are in a kind of like a timer once they picked it up. So it makes sense. And it, that is correct, though. Absolutely. Uh, and overall, Corky being up a, a, a kill so far is pretty good for him. He's already got the tier, uh, tier scaling up. Uh, he's getting pretty close to being able to complete the shield bow, which is really important, I think, for these trading matchups that are going to come into the mid game. So overall, I think uh, the Corky's in a good spot. Ooh, nice job by Xin Zhao, able to catch onto the rise right there. And that's going to be him bursted out before he has a chance to join this fight over at Drake. And that is going to be Terracotta. Probably backing away from this. They're just most likely they are just going to give this up and let them take over the mountain. Yeah, I would say that would be the proper call. You don't want to spend any more resources than you have to. Or is going to go ahead and take that back there. Um, getting a, a good early lead on dragons for um, T or yeah, on, I'm, I'm crazy. Hold on. The dragons are even. <laughs> yes, but dragons infernal, are even. The infernal soul is going to be the thing that's coming out. I think that would be fantastic, like way more important on CFG. But I mean, of course, if you're a TG, you just want to deny that overall. Yeah, no, see, the thing is, is those four, uh, if they get three Infernal Drakes on the side of TG, then you're going to basically end up with a uh, Vanguard stupid strong. Nice cage right there that is going to be dust caught out in a nice root uh, stun as well. There's going to be a missed solar flare and catched on the Zenith blade. And that's going to be Satis jumping in onto Antus trying to get some damage up. We got a TP coming out and that is going to be the ultimate dark power destruction coming out as that is going to be a kill picked up by Iron Tower. We have another TP coming down as this is becoming a 3v4 in the bot lane. Now five as we have the rest of CFG have to come by. Rise is going to basically TP into the middle of the lane, right into the fight and get bursted down. So he has to run away before he even has a chance to do anything. Or Riri's coming in on the backside. He's going to be looking to drop a pillar here, most likely trying to pick up uh, some damage onto the Shen. Trapping him against the wall. Trapping the Corky very well against that pillar. And that is going to be a lot of damage coming out from the Vagar's uh, magic right there. Just absolutely shredding him with those dark powers. And that is going to basically... Even out, I think, with the what was it two for three? Though there's a fight, is still going. Tien is letting himself get caught a little bit more than he should be. And now they're they're potentially disengaging, although Zin might be jumping in on this Vagar here in just a second. Hard to tell. It's only gonna keep up the pressure, and they I don't think they necessarily need to make this move, but if they want to, I guess they can. Uh oh. But the big one missing is probably good that they kind of back off and respect it. Uh, but there was a lot going on in the fight, a lot of different things going on. It looked a little bit, though, on the side of TG that they were off a beat of each other, mm -hmm. kind of with the, the teleport coming in, and then the bot lane was backing up, and then by the time that TN uh, Realm Warped down as well, it looks like he had no backup again. So it looks like this weird yeah. funnel, and then by the time Ariri got there, he was like, alright guys, we're going, I'm going now, <laughs> you know? Yes. And that, that seemed to work out better, he ended up, ended up flashing overall, but if they had that same coordination at the end of the fight today, at the beginning, it would have been a lot better. Absolutely. No, TG seems a little bit scuffed during that, uh, unfortunately. But, you know, it, it is what it is. It just happens. Sometimes the comms get mixed up. 
Yeah, that's true. And also, th this bot lane seems kind of weird in how you can assess their... You know, like, like a normal AD carry, it's got consistent damage with the autos no matter what. But this bot lane of a Mumu Vagar, it's kind of like burst, wait a few seconds, now we can do something again. Yep. And if you're not used to that pacing, if it's not something they practiced, it can be an easy misinterpretation, I think. Mm -hmm. No, it's because all of it is like super front loaded. You've got like, it's either absolutely everything or absolutely nothing. Hmm. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what Sadis was banking on on the initial engage. Once the Vagar cage went down and the Moo all popped through, he was like, all right, now I can jump in. Uh, so the, the response was good, and I, I think that's just kind of what they're banking on is that more consistent damage. If it's not going to be on the Tristana in the 2v2, then Sadis should be able to clean it up. Yeah, and the thing is, is like Antunes has been catching some nice hooks, but unfortunately that Leona has just been so tanky that they survive for a lot longer than... Uh, I think TG is expecting, which means that Sadis is just able to come in, get some extra damage off because they haven't switched targets yet. Uh, so target acquisition is really important for Terracotta. And I, this wave clear in the mid lane is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, like, I, unless someone like makes a, a terrible mistake at this point, that is going to be the rest of the game. <laughs> you do your abilities, I do my abilities. I don't think these minions will touch tower unless a jungler or support comes to gank one of us, you know? Mm-hmm. And to that respect, they should definitely make sure to put priority vision to make sure that, that does or does not happen for their team effective. Yeah, I'm kind of expecting right now, we've got Dragon up in a minute, so we'll most likely be seeing uh, Terracotta try and set up for this. Uh, Baron is not up for another three and a half, so that's going to be an objective coming up later, but we'll have second Rift Herald up momentarily. So it's going to be really interesting to see if TG decides to just pressure one and forego the other, or if we're actually going to see another set of fights. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, if you're on the side of TG, you definitely want to get some towers. Um, so I wouldn't say that, you know, that Dragon's necessarily the prio. I think getting the Rift Tail is maybe cracking open a plate. That way, Ryze can make this kind of play. Yep, we do have a nice engage right here. Pillar coming out from Ariri. He's going to basically be forcing Sadis off the back line. Zin Zhao's going to ult, throwing Trundle back, and that's going to be a nice bit of damage coming out from him as he's just able to jump onto these targets, absolutely shredding them. Same thing with uh, Corky, just blowing them up with these missiles. Riven has joined in on this fight, but they are really late to the party, and unfortunately, they're going to be the only one left, and that is going to be an ace for CFG. Yeah, it looks like we're going to go ahead and take a quick uh, look at that on the replay of our Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, so it looks like they just kind of come in. Overall, what we're going to see is this quirky package is used effectively to kind of separate the team here a little bit. The teleport coming through is just a little bit late. At this point, I think the play is kind of dead. Uh, and Bray Dude honestly did a lot of work in that, just diving on the right targets and keeping this team alive. Uh, after this, the, the Rise and the Riven are just here too late and kind of give a little extra gold over to the side of CFG overall. That quirky package is deceptively strong because it's not a flashy ability like the Equalizer from uh, Rumble, though it functions in essentially the exact same way, just on a slightly smaller scale. Yeah, I would say one of the underrated things about it is that besides just the, the cool damage, is it's the displacer too. So it, it moves the champions when it when it collides with them, and then it really just separates the team, makes you choose. Like you have to either be on the same side, and are you going to commit flash to that or take a ridiculous amount of damage to regroup? Yeah, I was like saying, like just you just walking trying to walk over it. It was just ugh, it was it was so far gone. Um, and this is probably going to be a mid tower falling right here, just because Corky's going to be able to blast it apart really easily. So that's going to be two towers down, uh, within less than a minute, and the dragon. So that's a lot of gold, a lot of objective power going over to the side of coin flip, and essentially they have taken this momentum, swung it in their favor. And so now we've got TG's got to do something to try and just grab onto the pendulum and get it back in their direction. Yeah, absolutely. If you take a look at those gold, like it was fairly even for the most part of the game, but now. Oh. I mean, look at this. You see uh, Oriri trying to take this Rift Arrow, but he's just getting absolutely decimated. Corky's yeah. just chasing him down. Yeah. I mean, just look at the gold on Corky. He's sitting like two and a half K over his, his, his lane opponent. And same thing with, with uh, Jin Zhao. 75k to 49 2.5k these these leads are insane so mm -hmm. if they keep giving corky and bray dude the, the ability to like control the map like this they're they're going to the 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 damage comparison is just is nuts like rice has a lot of damage for the gold but he's he's just not scaled up yet 
Mm -mm. No, right here, this is going to be a good catch on Tien, uh, by Tien. There's going to be a cage coming out as well. Primordial Burst, a little unnecessarily. Uh, although we do see that Route has decided to join in. He's going to be hopping over the wall, though, in order to avoid having to fight that out as he realized he came in a little bit late to that party. Yeah, guys, it was just a prank. I didn't really mean to teleport down here. Um, but, I mean, I guess everything was just on cooldown that they used uh, on Force uh, You Belong in a Museum. Uh, so, at least cool that he, he got out. Uh, didn't have to give over. Shut down. Uh, but teleport being down is going to probably not be ideal in the fact that they can't split as hard. So they're going to be forced to start grouping with Sadist. All right, we and, see Xin Zhao jumping onto Shielded Valor. Shielded Valor is kind of like, I don't really want to fight this. I'm just going to walk away and let you do your thing. Uh, Brave Dude, in the meantime, is still looking to kind of push this, although Shielded's kind of trying to bait it out. But I don't think he realizes that we've got a Leona and a Tristana waiting in the wings right here. Yeah, the rest of uh, TG is going to rejoin here. They're going to get spotted out, thankfully. Nothing too crazy yet, but Baron is officially on the map. So now teams have to be careful that a sideways And Toons, I don't think you wanted that bandage to hit. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say, but we do see Corky out here a little bit far by himself. This might be a, a mistake. He's by himself, except for the fact that there's a Leona nearby with Moby Boots. So that's going to be uh, him getting caught out, Solar Flare coming down, uh, essentially just kind of posturing against each other. There's not going to be a lot done in that sense. This is going to be the Rift Herald th shoving up the mid lane as they're just going to basically annihilate this wave. Uh, I expect this to easily be tier 2 turret, if not at least another charge onto the inhibitor turret. Yeah, actually, overall, I didn't, I didn't quite see this coming, but this was a really smart play on the on the side of CFG uh, with how much pressure they put oh. around that top side, just being able to macro by putting the Rift Herald mid. Antunes just power. can't engage. He just gets completely blown apart by those missiles. Yeah, the, the damage from the Corky is just is coming through very strong. All right, Oriri trying to clear out some vision. Uh, unfortunately, when you're 12 and 5, you got to get your experience wherever you can. Just look at how long it takes for him to take these wolves. It's it's so unfortunate. Oh, Shielded Valor's having to use the Blast Gun to get over the wall. Route, in the meantime, is just going to kind of jump over as well. But the mini wave is luckily going to keep him from getting caught by a missile. At the same time, this is a very split fight. We do see the Bandage Toss coming out onto Route, though. They are catching the Corky off to the side, but the shield, uh, we do have Shen coming in, protecting him. And that is going to be a lot of damage from the Amumu as he jumps onto the backline. He picks up that shutdown. In the meantime, up here, we have Trundle taking on the rest of uh, CFG. Bray Dude is kind of caught out as well. This is going to possibly be both shutdowns going away right here. Or Riri getting really low, and Bray Dude is just healing this up. He manages to take down the Troll. And he survives that. So now you've got Xin Zhao pretty strong right now. Shielded Valor is probably looking to take this fight. Antune's waiting off to the side, but it looks like they're just going to back off and be safe. That was absolute utter chaos. Uh, there was, it looked like an initial catch that just went into a teleport on the backside by the side of Rise. Shielded Valor was you know kind of off on the side trying to get his own thing and then but really the, the i think iron tower played that Sade is jumping right onto shielded valor we're going to see a flash come out as well as that's going to be essentially a full combo just bursting them out of existence uh there, there's nothing you can do against that buster cannon yeah i'm kind of sensing a theme in this game of teleports that are just coming through like on unsavable plays you know like <laughs> or or just very poorly placed like that rise tp I, I don't know exactly what he expected with that um and then we've got the the next infernal drake going down right now uh, the objectives that are available are just basically barren uh they accidentally left vagar behind but they're gonna try and sneak it probably the smartest thing they could do but i don't know if they have the damage to take this down quickly enough leona is walking over to kind of check it out so we might actually be seeing that happen right here the tp has basically revealed that they're there so vagar tping in means that they know that they're on baron uh this is gonna be oh they do manage to get it though this could be the saving play yeah, that was a very smart call. I don't know who was making the shots for TG on that, but it was very quick. It was very decisive. And, you know, if they're going to get Dragon on this side, it's going to get Baron on the side. Very well done overall. And just, like, it, it was tragic. I, they had no idea on the side of CFG that Corky even used his package to clear the the, the chickens camp on the red side. So yep. it, it was just so under their nose, and they didn't know what's happening next to them. Yeah, it's like after he did that, that's when the TP came out. So it was essentially then they knew that they were on the Baron. 
Um, and that's just kind of one of those things where if he's probably thinking to himself, man, if I had that, I could go in and steal this and take them all out by myself. Yeah, it's one of those hindsights 2020, you kind of kick yourself for, for mm -hmm. things that happen. But uh, it's all right. Overall, it looks like um, the gold lead is actually kind of struggling. It looks like it's only a little over 2.5k at this point. So TG coming back a little bit on that side. The, the CS is staying reasonably close, except for in the top lane. Uh, so overall, we're now looking at the point where mid, mid game's kind of starting to, to close out here in a few minutes. They've got one more fight. And then we'll be going into late game. Uh, which I think is really good for the side of TG overall with that scaling Vagar, the Rise. Uh, maybe not so much on the Ribbon, but Ribbon's still a very strong split push presence. So it, it is a strong split push presence, uh, although as we can see right here, the Tristana basically negates any 1-3-1 they might try to do uh, because you have to send the Vagar off to the side lane, uh, or they set the Vagar off to the side lane to try and get those stacks, just keep on getting the, uh, the Dark Magic, the Black Magic built up. Uh, hopefully that means that as these fights start to get a little go on a little bit longer, eventually the damage is going to be coming off of Vagar that will just be too much for these assassins and to be able to start taking them out. I do want to look at Xin Zha's build. He's gone the Gore Drinker uh, Wits End build, so he's a little bit tankier, uh, which is what I think he desperately needs during this game. Yeah, definitely a good choice overall on the side of uh, Brady to make the decision. I mean, he has got a lot of gold, so he could have, you know, opted for the more damage, but opting into the team play with that uh, core drinker sort of thing, wanting to keep him alive, especially through the the primordial burst from uh, Iron Tower. So I think mm -hmm. that's a great call. This is going to be another siege onto this mid lane that just basically doesn't account for anything because of how quickly they're able to shred through these minions. Even with the Baron buff, they're just going down almost instantly. Yeah, and that, that's something we did talk about, you know, in, in Champ Select, not having an AD carry and opting into the Vagar does mean that these siege attempts are going to be quite lackluster. It's going to take a lot more effort for them to do so. Having Baron, of course, is going to help, uh, but overall, it's going to be quite hard for them to, you know, get a full gold swing out of the Baron play. And now we do have the five-man push on bot. That's going to be Xin Zhao caught out. The Event Horizon comes out means that there's nowhere for Zin to go. He's going to put out the ultimate to try and stay alive. But everyone just kind of walks inside of it and is starting to do all the damage on top of him. The TP is coming out as well. So that is going to be Corky joining this fight. We also have Shen here as well. They're trying to get in on this. But then we just have the rest of TG diving. Oriri is tanking the tower, I believe. He was doing a lot. Look at the amount of damage coming out from that bandage toss on Antunes. And that means that you belong in a museum is the only one left. This tower is going down. This is where the power of Terracotta's comp is actually able to shine through. Look how quickly they're able to take this tower now that they're actually able to hit it. This is going to be Inhib going down as well. We could be seeing just a massive push for the end. Look at that. Diving right underneath the tower. They're getting as close to it as they can, trying to take it out as fast as possible. They do manage to catch the Shen with the Event Horizon. He's going to go down to Shielded Valor. That's going to be the no first way. Nexus turret going down. We do have just a few members of Terracotta still alive. Antune's getting really low. He's having to pop the Flash. He is ignited, so he's going to be falling here shortly. We see to Iron Tower trying to get some damage out. Not quite able to do it. The shutdown is going to come out. In the meantime, Oriri is hitting on this Nexus. He's trying to end the game. He's going around. Shield and Valor doing exactly the same. But then Sanus comes out and finishes it off. And that is going to be TN going for the oh end. And that Lord. is game. What? Just this game was so even. And then I was talking about how they can't siege. But then all of a sudden, I guess that just got, you know, negated by the fact that I forgot if there's no one alive, there's nothing to worry about in a siege. So <laughs> well played, TG. Well played. Oh, man. See, it was like once they had all five members there, they're like, okay, we got to push to end. We got to push to end now because they're going to start finishing us off. This is probably the biggest gold and kill discrepancy we've seen in a victory in FOF history. I, I think it's just very interesting how like they, they were down a good amount and then it went from even to game over in just a matter of minutes like i that was explosive that was very clean shot calling on the side of g uh, tg to see it one inch and just take a mile yep. now i i don't remember exactly what the stat is but if i remember correctly there was something that riot did a couple of years ago with the mid lane where they wanted to give mages a little bit more of a agency when taking these towers, where as the game progresses, the towers take more magic damage over time. Uh, either it was something like that or some kind of scaling. And I think that's what happened with Vagar, where he was able to start just dealing so much damage with his auto attacks, rise the same way, and eventually just get to this point where you're just kiting around the Nexus. And it's kind of it, like, 
that was just absolutely intense. I had to watch it over and over and over just to try and decipher exactly what was going on. Yeah, yeah, it's just really well played overall. The, the, the amount of chaos that they caused at the end to allow uh, Obriri and Tien to just end up closing it out, a little bit X Pack A style throwback, was fantastic. But I can't wait to hear what their insight is on this game. Absolutely. With that, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back, folks. So stick around. Welcome, FOF, to a special occasion. A special, special occasion. For some reason, I'm allowed to interview my boy, Kevin. Or Antunes, you know, I, I know top players, you know, so I'm impressed. So, Kevin, how do you feel after the win? Oh, I feel pretty good about it. All right. My first question for you, Sir, Sir Claptoons, is you've been playing in, since season one, right? Yeah. And you've been usually facing competition that is above your rank, you know? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about uh, facing people that some would consider dogs? <laughs> I mean, this league's pretty easy for me because I play mainly against, like, diamond players and, like, people that are higher ranks than, ranks than me, right? So just playing into, like, this, like, platinum under league, is just, I just think it's just easy and free. <laughs> and I just All like right. to like, troll a bit. That's true, that's true. You play a lot of hook champions. Is there uh, any metaphor that we're going to derive from your champion pool? I mean, if y'all continue to ban me out, I might as well just start playing enchanters. <laughs> All right. So, Kevin, 
as yeah. I believe that we are the best bromance in the uh, FOF community as we write power rankings for Luna. Yeah. <laughs> right now we're we're kind of we're kind of uh almost getting beat up by the UB bromance between Jeff and Utility Monster. Do we have anything to say to them? I don't know, man. <laughs> Maybe we're gonna start right in about my muscle tear. <laughs> All right, that's that's part of it. Now, on a more serious note, you guys are gonna be facing Rex later tonight, which is a huge game for seedings and playoffs. Yeah. Do you have anything to say about Rex and your match later? I mean, I'm just looking forward to like the support versus support matchup and stuff because this guy wants to prove that he's the number one support in the league, and I don't think so. I think he's complete dog. So we'll see how later it goes. So any uh, Zabunafu references that you want to drop in this interview? <laughs> there we freaking go. Um, that's about it. Thank you for uh, this interview, Kevin. And we're going to give it off to the actual people that aren't going to troll. Thank you for having me.